and welcome back to another video as you guys can already tell by the thumbnail and title well we're working on some crown today the homies pulled up and they're messing with some of the wiring stuff setting up the double din and we're going to be working on the speakers as well as throwing the coilovers in which we will show you in a second so that we can finally get this thing rolling we've got some wheels on the way for it but currently got a couple wheels in here that we might uh let them run for a week or so till the other ones come in and that is that so we'll show you guys what we got in a minute um I, i'm gonna start messing with the back seat so we can get to the top hats and bring you along for well the transformation it should be sound today and well hopefully a lot lower on some wheels and we'll see how the fitment goes of course we are going to check and see if we've got the harness above the fender well and if we've got to tuck that but besides that hope to have this car transformed by the end of the video let's get into it all right, so as you guys can see, the back seats are all out. It's actually not as hard as I thought, and I'm very, very excited that I don't have to go through the back. So usually if you open the trunk and you can see the top hats on the inside, well, you usually access them from the trunk. This side wouldn't be too, too hard, but yeah, there's no way. This is worse than Ty's Majesta, and I told myself I would never do another Majesta. So we just cleared this out just because we weren't quite sure, but door cards are off obviously they're working on the audio for the bottom seats um what you're going to want to do first is just basically yank up same as most any back seat it is just in clips back seats come out you just got to maneuver them around the little well seat belt things and then as for the top this does have rear reclining seats so there were some electrical stuff attached to the back but not very hard to do uh i just unclipped the seat belt, not very hard. And then there were a couple bolts, one, two, three, and four that I had to take off. They were just in flaps behind the headrest, so you did have to take off the headrest. But other than that, they really are just held in by the four bolts. Oh, and a couple bolts on the bottom. I believe there were three, one right here, one right there, and actually two right here. So that is super simple, easy. And now I am working on the top hats. I moved this plastic piece, which usually covers all of this, and just bent up this little cardboard area. As you can see, I already took off the little top plates. All they are are little fill-ups, and well, now we can access the top hat. So, same thing goes for that side. It is a little bit of a pain just having to hold all this stuff up. I'm sure we can take off the whole top deck, but we've got speakers and covers and all the other stuff that's attached to it. So we are just gonna hold this up out the way, access the top hats when we get the car in the air and hopefully be able to drop those. All right, so the first coil was out. You guys saw the time lapse real quick. It is super simple and easy. It is an independent rear suspension and you have a rear subframe. So all it is is one bolt on the knuckle. And then like I showed you guys, we've got the three bolts that go up here on the top hat. Those were 14s and the bottom one was a 19. Pretty easy just to get out, use the impact, came right out. And then I actually had to jump on this uh, to put some weight down just because of the length of the actual stock strut. It was kind of getting stuck on the boot and stuff. And so, well, that was the easiest way. So this side is out. We've also got to do some explaining, uh, which they're figuring out the whole radio situation because this one is different than this one. So this is a 155, this is a 151. This is a base model and this is the full package, which has the reclining seats and well, seems to have more features. So we'll go over that in a couple. Let's knock this out and then we'll get to it. All right, real quick, we're gonna go over the situation that we're having uh, to start us off. All right, so basically for my model, in the 97, you have these two connectors. One you're using for signal and one's for power, which is given all the power, ground, and leads. That is not the same as mine, so we had to use RCAs. So now I use an RCA input, which is the high, out, the high volt um, input and output from the actual harness, and we're gonna splice into the high voltage so compared to yours there was different connectors on the actual the stock radio system which it might be because this is a 155 and that's a 151 Correct. or based on i don't know trim model or something i'm pretty sure it's got to be the trim model i mean hey it's japan you don't yeah. know what they're doing but at the same time 
Once but it shouldn't be hard though. You guys got like power to it at least. We got power, we got signal. We don't have signal to the actual speakers. Perfect. So that's this. Purple and green are always signal to the speakers, front and rear. Um, this is obviously not the right connector. Once we get the right one, that's it. Perfect. This shit should be working. All, AC, this all the AC units are gonna go in. The only thing you're not getting in is obviously the antennas. Because Japan is on the left side. US is right side. Perfect. Uh, flip. US swap, is swap left. Those, swap, yeah, those. swap those. Swap those. So, cool. Should look like that. So this is what he did to have his. And then you used what? ES300 mounting like around the double din? 99 ES300. And then double -din. took a Dremel and basically took a Dremel, just. Took about a quarter, quarter inch on each side. And then you Dremel the whole face out. You're gutting the whole face. Just slip right over just slip right and over. make flush. So yep. super sick. Um, maybe we'll do an update. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna have this video out tomorrow. So by the time you guys see this, hopefully Tyler's will be all situated and I can give you guys the links, um, depending on if you have the 151 or 155 and get it situated. And 151, if you wanna do rotors and pads, 1999 Camry four cylinder pads and 96 ES300 rotors. Perfect. Dude, that'll fuck you up. That shit is, that shit is stock, my bro. Listen, it's max high. All right, you got full adjustability going on. That shit's static. It's just you have a sway bar in the back, so it's easier to make sure that they hang down and they're not compressed. So after we get the front side done, we'll be able to lower it all we want. But that is as high as it goes, and we have probably like almost a foot of adjustability, so we have, we'll be we able to dump be it for sure. And a couple minutes later, we've got the front in the air. The new coilover is on, uh, super easy. It's a true suspension system, uh, same as the rear. You've got an upper control arm, a knuckle, or up front, you've got a spindle, and then a lower control arm. There's a little mounting bracket that the coilover goes to with a 17 on both ends. The back one is a 19 on both ends. It's a 17 on both ends. And up top, I do believe these are 12s. Uh, the easiest thing I did was take this tool right here. I think it's called a Pitman arm something. I think it's for tie rod ends, but I use it for basically cracking open the castle nut up top and separate the upper control arm from the spindle. That allows you to pull the spindle back and you've got all that room to, well, get the coilover out or the stock strut out and get the new coilover in. So we're about to put this other one in. Um, super, super easy. If you noticed on the other side, all of the fender liner is out. There is a wiring harness on this side, which you will want to make sure that you tuck if you're going any sort of low. There you go. All the way around. Same thing with a lot of big body cars, GSs, LSs, and so forth. Just because the tire will sit a lot closer to this. And well, if you rub through this, it is a pain, especially with these Japanese cars. It's gonna be a lot harder to get the wiring diagram and try to rewire it all. So we will be tucking this side. If there is one on that side, we'll be doing that as well. It does mean that we have to take the fenders off, but I just wanted all the suspension stuff done right away. The rears, I mean, are not super dumped, but like we stated before, the coilover is at max height, so that is as high as it can go. A little bit lower than stock, I'd probably say like two inches, three inches or so, but we'll get to lowering that once everything is on together and we make sure we have no issues. All right, I can't see, so what are our boys you're gonna have, you're gonna have to like tell that? me if it's gonna touch or hit, because that side's gonna touch first. How close are we? Nah, you're good. Is Still gonna, good. Is it gonna make it? Yeah, it looks, good. looks fine over here. It's, it's on the floor, yeah. We did lower it some, but uh, we have a lot more to go down. Right now, we're just test fitting to put it on some wheels. These are the wheels off the LS. They're 18 by 10 plus 12 or plus 15, I believe. Um, but we definitely want to go down lower and tuck some. So either up a control arm or we're going to have to shorten the spindles anyways. So we might get a couple of degrees uh, tilt out of that because, I mean, Tyler wanted a couple of degrees of up front. Um, but yeah, for the most part, they fit pretty well. I mean, it 
it looks real good like i said the rear is all the way as high as it can go the front we just lowered it some so we could try and put it on the ground and get like a rough uh guesstimate of well spec to fitting wise and what we might have to do but i don't know if somebody definitely rode like this i think they would clap their stuff especially without being rolled which we also have to do so i'm probably going to call my boy mark sparks if you guys are in the orlando area i'm sure you guys know who mark sparks is um he's got a bunch of cool cars he's an og fender roller og guy in the car scene um does some djing and stuff on the side super cool guy he rolled the majesta he's rolled the ls he's done a couple cars for us so we'll have him out here coilovers are done um actually pretty easy install the hardest part was getting the back seats out of that and tomorrow we will finish up the audio stuff uh, mr lopinto said he's going to look for the adapter and hopefully be able to be bumping the system get the speakers all wired up and system going so all right so we finally have the fender off um luckily it is pretty easy to get the bottom they're one piece fenders so just two on the bottom right here and then lift it up two right there and the only hard bolt is going to be this one right here you just open the door all the way if you have a wiggle joint it makes it a lot easier to get that but the thing i really wanted to show you guys um is this little brace harness bar it was spot welded on from factory i don't know how much structural integrity it actually has being that it's like super flimsy but you can see it is moving uh, what i did is i took a drill bit basically the size of the tiny little hole drilled it just enough um, to where it kind of broke through this of course it's still going to be attached and then took a flathead pried it all the way around because the harness runs underneath and behind this so we're kind of utilizing this as a piece to kind of hold all of the wiring harness up which we'll show you how to do that in just a minute or at least how we're going to do it but uh we may end up having to get rid of it anyways with as high up as the wheel's going to be if it hits on turning we might have to i don't know take some of it off and at that point it's going to be super flimsy anyways and we'll just do the same thing there take the whole thing off Coming over to the passenger side, as you can see, I have not taken it off. The stock wiring harness is all up in there, and well, it's time to be moving it. So if you guys can see these tiny little dots right there, if you just get a metal drill bit, just the size of it, make kind of like, I don't know, a little hair indent in it, doesn't really take much um, just because they're heat pressed, and you'll be able to take a flathead pry it off and take all these clips off the wiring harness to move it in front one minute 37 seconds later today two we actually have the car up in the air uh tyler and i this morning we came out we lowered the front some um pretty much got it to where the stock tire is about maybe a quarter of an inch or so from the top of the frame rail and the wiring harness is out of the way we just did the rear which i'm going to actually show you on this side the easiest way to lower your rear end but as you can already see it's eaten a pretty good amount and uh, i would say there's maybe like negative four negative five stock of course once it's on the ground it might go up just a little bit but being that these are stiff coils it's not going to have too much movement um i didn't want to vlog too much of this because it's just basic coilover adjustment stuff let's move this to the side and so as you notice the upper control arm is slanted as the car gets jacked up or the coilover starts to compress the knuckle does not go straight up it actually goes slightly at an angle which means if you attach the top hat and you just spin up the bottom of the coil over well the knuckle the two little things that uh, slide into the coil start to go sideways so it's really hard to do that what we did is actually undid the whole entire strut again the 19 bolt and nut at the bottom and then the three 12s up top we shortened it all the way to what we wanted we attached it to the knuckle and then we put the jack underneath and as he started to raise the knuckle i pushed it um or pushed or pulled i forgot which one on this side and made it fit into the three top hat bolts up here tightened everything up and well this is how it's gonna sit so it's time to finally get it on the ground we'll kind of see how the height is interior is still all taken apart but we are trying to get an alignment today and hopefully the fender rolls as well uh so we will keep you updated with that but once we have it on the ground we'll give you a little walk around we'll see if there's any movement when it comes to suspension travel and uh maybe leave it like this get an alignment until the new wheels come in and then you know we'll go about it that way so let's get to it and uh see how she looks in a sec mm -hmm. mm. 
Mm. All right, real quick, big surprise ended up coming in today. We've got the turbo kit. We are gonna keep this kind of a secret for a little bit, but well, for all of you guys that are actually watching the video, you guys can get a little, a get little, a little sneak peek. Get a little sneak peek. All this stuff's still apart, but luckily we were able to connect the two side connectors on the doors uh, so that he can drive. Get a quick alignment and um, just so he can drive it, you know, the next week or so, and we'll get back to all this. I'm not gonna go because it's a mess in the garage. So when he gets back, uh, maybe this evening we'll get some rollers or uh, get some cool photos and stuff. Got to take a you know sick thumbnail and stuff for this, anyways. Yes, sir. And we are back with an update. Um, as you guys can tell, well, we are on the side of the highway. Long story short, we'll dive into it when we get home, but uh, Tyler drove. We made sure that the tire had clearance and would have no issues. As you guys saw, we tucked the harnesses way higher um, you know, than it really needed to be. But uh, Ty's about five minutes from the alignment place, and about 45 minutes from our house. And the tire, the stock tire started to unbelt and when it unbelted, it caught onto the straps that we made, the zip ties, cut that down, like brought that down and then uh, yanked the entire harness out of the engine bay. So um, it's a mess, there's a blown out tire, there's a wiring harness that is just on the ground now. So we are going to try to use the winch in the trailer. Um, I have multiple ramps, I have a bunch of wood, and we're gonna try and get this on, hopefully without a lot of issues. Being that it's low, I'm hoping it doesn't catch on the dovetail, but I think we'll be able to get it at uh, enough of an incline. So I'm not gonna go and walk around it now. There's a bunch of traffic, it's loud, but once we get it on the trailer and get it back home, we'll dive into it. It's been a long past two days and this is uh, the icing on the cake. So now there's gonna be a lot more content. We showed you guys the turbo kit stuff that's gonna have to be put off and well, hopefully I can get one of my buddies to come help redo the wiring harness. So put the RIPs down below, throw a like on this video or maybe a share to the friends and uh, well, let's get to it. See you guys at home. And welcome back. We got the car back home. Uh, Tyler actually has been tearing it apart, went and dropped the trailer off and, and ran some errands. But here is the mess. Um, right here is where all of the wiring harness goes in and actually connects to the bottom of the fuse box. As you can see that some of these connectors, the ones that were on the closer side to where the actual harness comes through, well, they broke. Luckily, I mean, we should be able to use the connectors. I only think that one connector piece fully came apart or maybe two, I don't know. Yeah, we won't be able to reuse that. But either way, uh, some of the connectors on here are still on, some of the little metal pieces that go on it. And I have talked to a couple people that I am positive that they can do it. Just depends on some price and time frame and, and all of that. But we tucked the harness yesterday uh, or the day before, whichever day it was, all the way up on top. And what happened is the stock tire debelted and when it debelted the tires moving forward you can see it actually broke this piece it goes onto the fender this is a little metal piece that holds on as well as completely bending and slapping this piece that just shows you how much sheer force was going in a circle but uh yeah this is pretty much it it is time to take some pictures and send them off to some people so that we can hopefully get some quotes i've got some friends that might be able to take a look at it as well as uh, a couple shops that i've heard nothing but good things about so you guys have seen how to put coilovers on you've seen what not to do luckily the fender didn't get messed up but now the car doesn't run drive turn on anything so well more content to come we've got the turbo kit as shown and mentioned before but I think we're gonna end it here. We're gonna try and figure out what the next step is and bring you guys along for that. JZX100 coilovers, Silver's coilovers. They'll get you low. They'll get you low enough to run through your wiring harness. 
so uh, yeah, they are not maxed out either. But if you enjoyed this video, if you feel bad for us, if uh, you're ready to see some more content, drop a like, drop a sub, and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.